Um, let's pause it. No. When you're ready. Three, two, one. Hi, everyone. Welcome again. It's Veronica Marcolini with Unchained Hearts here on Soma Fusion Mind, Body, and Soul. And I have Tanuj again as my guest, Tanuj Sudan. And I've been following this, this guy for about two years now, and he's awesome. Um, uh, he's so young. He's only 22, and he has his own school. Um, Tanuj, welcome, and, and tell us about you. <laughs> Uh, it's great to be here, Veronica. Thank you for having me on again. And I'm excited to, to connect because our last conversation was just so fun. And so many people enjoyed that conversation. I got, you know, so many messages and so many comments. And your tribe is, is wonderful. You got you have some amazing people. I could feel the energy of the people that were watching and commenting. I read through all the comments. So I just want to say, like, thank you for having me. And it's a pleasure um, and it's really cool to connect with all of you, you guys and gals tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Tanush. And your crowd too. I really feel like they're authentic as well. That's what I love about doing these shows. Like it's very rare that you can have that, that connection with other people, you know, some yeah. shows it's like, man, I feel like I'm pulling teeth out of this person and Katie has to like come and rescue me. Right, Katie? <laughs> but uh, no, this, this is, Hey, I'm being real. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, Katie, if you don't mind real quick, give me the phone number. I'm sorry. I haven't written it down. It's been since January that I've been on with you and I feel so that I didn't do my homework, but can you like say what the phone number is so that people can call in if they would like to please? Katie, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's on the thing here. Let me see. On the face. No worries. I'm sure people are just joining. This is oh, here is that. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, not the meeting ID. We don't, we wouldn't want them to go on there. But anyway, whenever Katie pops up, we'll ask her again about the. Uh, I think, I think I have the, uh, the number you did send it to me. I'm pretty sure. Uh, live call in number is 1 929 Yes, I got it too. Again, 1 929 If you'd like to call in and ask Tanush some questions. Okay, Tanush, first question is. Do you want to you write that in the chat or, or are people just going to memorize that? Oh, um, well, it's on the uh, Facebook thing on the, 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 on the section where, where, you can, where we comment. Okay, oh. let me just put it but in yeah, the chat real quick. Mm -hmm. Four, three, six, two, eight, six, six. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for all the questions okay. and conversations. All oh. right. <laughs> it's okay. So how was your day today, Tanush? <laughs> What's your, uh, what's your average day? What do you do? Average day. So I woke up today. Um, you know, my, my day was well. Thank you for asking. Uh, and I woke up and what was the first thing I did? I think I came downstairs because I had, I woke up and I was, I was having some crazy dreams, crazy, crazy dreams. Um, like usual, the dreams have been intensifying. So I usually wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm back in the human again. This is interesting. And it takes me a few minutes to like, realign and to like come back um i usually like take a shower and then i come and i check my computer and i start getting you know stuff for for the school and checking my email responding to people um working with, with my assistant and then we just plan the day so i was releasing a video today we had a live video uh that me and leslie had done and i was sharing that like we had done a premiere and so uh, we were basically just sharing about the school. We were talking about different things. So once that was going up, I was also sending out a few emails and doing some other social media stuff. So it's, it's a, it's a lot of like, you know, business, but also YouTube stuff. Um, and that takes up a decent amount of time. And I finally said enough with that. Let me go outside and get some fresh air. And so I went out uh, to the park and really just sat with the energy and did some meditation and, did a lot of energy work and really connected. I, if, interestingly enough, I was looking at the sky and I'm like, oh my God, there's a giant craft right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally wouldn't have noticed it, but when you sent me, you sent me a few pictures and stuff of how you were like, look, there's a craft right there. And look, there's Alice right there. And then I was like, oh wait, I think I've been seeing them the whole time in my mind, you know, cause we're so conditioned. It's like, oh, that's not, that's not really happening. But like, I was like, wait, it's right there. And then I tried to grab it energetically and it started shape-shifting. Um, 
Yeah, and they, it's like, they do that because they know once they become aware of that we're watching them, like me, I'll take three pictures, one right after the other without a flash. Now, if you want their yeah. attention, you put yeah. the flash on. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I'll do that next time. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you'll see like choom, things being shot in the air because you know there's a war going on up there. Yes. So like, oh, man, that's exciting. I just saw something fly out, you know, like I wonder who they're fighting. And I always ask them, who are you? Who are you fighting? You know, what do you want? Like things like that. So go ahead. Let me interrupt. So, so it was this crazy thing. I went, um, I, I went to the park and I was, you know, you can see if you have the energetic site, I know I talked to you about this in private messenger. If you have the energetic site, you can see the grid and you can see how all of the humans are almost walking on a conveyor belt. Okay. And they're basically just running off. This is the machine now that we're talking about. They're just, they're just following like an energetic trail. And it, they're basically locked in the grid so much where they can't do much with their energy. And I've also noticed that if you are really bright, when you walk around, um, it's almost like they are subconsciously implanted to send you negative energy. So I've noticed this for a long time, but I really noticed it today. And I was like, this, this is crazy. Like everywhere you will walk, everywhere I walk, I, I will literally observe how the grid will try to box me in, how it will try to surround me, even though I am doing everything. So I'm like, I'm like rearranging the grid as I walk. Every time I walk around, I'm shifting the grids all the time to basically realign it to the way that I want it to. So I finally found a spot. I was peaceful and I was sitting with the trees and with the lake and the water and uh, so much was happening. So much spiritual activity was happening. I was calling out to my friends, the, the watchers, and they were starting to show up. Um, but it was really interesting. I was watching these ducks just sit there and all of a sudden they all just freaked out and started like flying all the way to the left and like a huge, like, burst of energy went off it was like a giant explosion and i saw it happen in the astrals i did i was i had to like do a double take i was like did i just see that you know sometimes you'll see something and you're like did i just see that especially if it's spiritual and not physical so i watched this huge explosion happen where these trees were where the spaceship kind of was and all of the the birds just took off and flew away and i felt this negative energy roll through and i'm just watching everything got darker all of a sudden and so I'm like, this is crazy. Like there's a straight up battle going on. And so then I'm like expanding my light. I'm sending it. I'm trying to like negate whatever is going on over there. And, oh man, it's just crazy. These sirens are going off in the background as I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is, this is my life now. <laughs> yeah. And especially cause you know, um, a disclaimer, I always say, okay, if anybody wants to go online with me or if anybody has wants to do coaching calls with me, I, I tell him, are you sure you want to do it? Um, I, as, as well as other super soldiers do have abilities to what they call um, initiate uh, DNA reactivation or activation because sure. I was able to activate my DNA and the other, and they, they asked me, it's like, well, how do you activate your DNA? Well, for example, the other day I worked out four hours. So I did a bunch of traps and back and, and like half an hour cardio. And I, I was hurting the next day. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm glad I did it. And, and it's, you talk to your DNA while you're working out, you, you can take salt baths. I mean, I, I even put things like chiltepin in there, which is a real, a, a round little <laughs> red uh, chile you pop. And then it, it just, it just, clears out your mucus, your whole system. Mm -hmm. No, it does not hurt, you know, the private areas, nothing like that. But I do wild crap like that, you know, take extreme hot baths and then jump in cold water. I don't know. I just, I, I, once I, I started activating my DNA, I started losing the fat that I didn't need, mm -hmm. right? Cause we do need some fat, but people say, oh, I got to lose weight. I got to lose weight. No, it's not about the weight. It's because muscle is, is weight, you know? So going back to um, telling people how I, I generally activate, help activate super soldiers. And it didn't dawn on me until I was in the Las Vegas uh, conference in March. And a lot of people were coming up to me, am I a super soldier? Am I, I'm like, I can't tell you, only you. And I learned this from Penny Bradley too. She's like, I'm not gonna tell anybody about their memories or anything unless they're ready or they've had, right? They've had some things written down uh, and, uh, and just the other day, Tanisha, you were telling me that, do you want to share that 
um, how we were talking about how people are like kind of throwing spiritual gang signs or mudras. <laughs> it's <laughs> so crazy. The By the way, there's, there, there's a little bit of an echo. I don't know. It might be fixed now, but um, it's so crazy. The mudras are so crazy. I was with, I was at the same park with my friend and I was walking around. He's also spiritual as well. And as I said, like with the grid, they try to offload negative energy onto you. And this is an attack. This is what it is. It's an attack. It's, it's hitting your auric field. And if you're not sensitive enough, it's just going to uh, collect on your aura and see what I've kind of understood is that there's so many layers to your aura. So it doesn't usually penetrate through, especially if you have a really thick aura. I mean, if you're a normal person, it probably will. But if you, if you're a super soldier, quote unquote, if you've done a lot of energy work and you're kind of in this, this game, um, it, it doesn't penetrate through, but it, it, it is annoying and you do feel it as a density. So I'm walking by and I, I, what I feel intuitively, what I kind of picked up is that there are people that basically get hijacked energetically by negative entities where their spirit's not there. So their spirit's not fully there. And so that there's, there's cracks in the aura and the negative entity can slip in and then release negative energy towards those individuals that are just vibrating really high as a way of kind of balancing out the energy. Cause this is, a, this is a matrix machine. So I see these people doing these weird things. Like the first person kind of like looked, it was crazy because they're looking down or they're not even looking at me. They're looking at their phone while they're walking, which, you know, it doesn't make sense. But then I see their astral eyes look right at me. It's almost like they have double eyes. So their, their physical eyes is looking down. My eyesight is really weird in the sense that I will see a person's astral form more, more so than their physical form. That's just my eyes have always been like that. So I, I see them like do these weird things and I felt like a, a tinge or something. And I'm like, what, what just happened? Did that just, did that really just happen? Just like before. And so I re redirected I immediately. They just like sent it back and it happened a couple more times. And then it started to get a little bit more aggressive. And I was trying to point it out to my friend and my friend wasn't catching on to it. And then we finally sat at the rocks and I sense a dude walking behind us, kind of like trying to corner off our signal. And it happens again. And I'm like, did you feel that? And he's like, yeah, I felt that one. I'm like, yeah, because that was pretty obvious. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, we're always getting boxed in. And I've, I've really understood it's a suppression of magical power. That's what they want. They want to suppress the power because anytime I start cranking it up and start really using my juice, it's like a whole factory of people will spawn and start trying to box the frequency in. So it's, it's absolutely crazy. It is. I, I totally have to deal with that on a daily basis. And last weekend, um, two Saturdays ago, I just went into a, to a target and I was followed by two guys. I'm like, I'm over here trying to just get whatever I need and get out. I don't like to go to the grocery store if I can avoid it because I feel their energy. I see them, so dense. their eyes, right? I try not to, to look at them. I mean, I look at one time and I can tell what they're wearing, you know, profiling pretty much because I was in law enforcement and I don't like to use that word, <laughs> but that's what they trained us. So one, even as a little kid, I can see like, I, I you know, I was trained to not stare. My parents were like, no me this but I am, don't point. And, but with the abilities that you come in, you're, you already know. So I was followed by two men at Target. And then I went to Fries and followed by another one outside toward my vehicle. I'm like, what the heck? You know, it's, uh, and, it, and it happens more, more than often. It, it's not a coincidence anymore. Um, because I'm speaking more out against the, the bad AI, we'll say, and, yes. and, and the matrix. The, system. the matrix. It's, it's very dangerous. They don't like it. So, um, ah, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, but yeah, I can, I can see those, those energetic fields and things like that. But then was real quick. Um, what is it that you offer in your school? What is it that, how do you train people? What, what do you do? That way I can remember what I was going to say, because it does happen. So yeah. So yeah, the school is basically my compilation of all metaphysical knowledge. So we do break down the matrix. We do break down the, the grid constructs and the AI and uh, Sophia versus Yaldabaoth. We talk about the machine. We talk about 
uh, how the grids are laid out. We talk about um, how to protect your energy. We talk about how to cultivate your energy. We talk about how to meditate. We talk about how to raise your frequency, how to start tapping into magic, how to develop your life purpose, how to uh, uh, attract uh, your soul tribe, how to do basically anything that you would need to know in this whole field and beyond. We even talk about how to uh, attract money and how to become you know, wealthy because by bending the matrix in your favor. Anything that you would need to know, if you're awake, this is the school for you. You need to come to the school because we have all of the information that I've just sat and just compiled and just studied endless hours, not just of my own material, other people's material, and then learn from them. And I specialize in energetics. That's my specialty is the ability. So I will teach you extremely high level abilities, abilities where you can work with the storm energies, create storms, create uh, wind currents, create massive energetic constructs, and then direct those into your life. So I teach offense and defense, and that's going to be uh, something, you know, we just launched a school about a month ago. So it's just opening up and we ha already have about 70 ish members or so. So we're, we're definitely growing. Um, but this school is my, my, you know, initial creation. It's my masterpiece as well for the spiritual being that needs to understand that there is a war. Also, it's not just love and light. You can't just sit there and, and hum ohm all day. You have to realize that there's actually a metaphysical war going on around you and it's interdimensional. And if you're not protected and you don't know how to wield your power, you're going to be eaten. So uh, it's crazy shit out here. And I experience it on a daily basis. And I see how it's just getting more and more intense as the days are going by. And all I wished was when I first came into this, that somebody showed me what to do or how to protect myself. Because I posted on my Facebook uh, yesterday of a video, and it, it was kind of like our conversation that reminded me of a video when I used to train with uh, aerokinesis, which is airbending, of a chopper flying above me for like 30 minutes, just hovering over me for like 30 solid minutes. It's a Black Hawk military chopper that's just staring there. And then as soon as I pull out my phone and start recording it, it, look, it, it basically, the dude looked at me, I saw him, and he just flew off instantly. And he was there for 30 minutes. <laughs> yep, I saw that video and, and my, myself and my super soldier friends as well have uh, like, they have like me, I have two TR3Bs that are here day and night, but the choppers will fly. You know, yeah, I'll be yeah. having a conversation with my family or my kids. And I'm like, oh, there it is. And of course they roll their eyes. I'm, oh, you know, how could it be? No, it's I'm being, I'm being followed all the time. I mean, even when I go on my bike rides or, or even just, once I leave my apartment, I open the door. There we go. There's a ship here. They're, they're following me over here. It's like, I'm already used to it, but it's like, come on, guys, like, leave me alone. Like, you know, the attacks are, are there every day. And um, I mean, I was I was even uh, in a involved like three months ago, I was involved in a, hit, um, how do you say, somebody hit me from the back. And I, I have a oh, big wow. feeling that if it wasn't, if it wasn't um, because I had my, my daughter and, um, you know, and, and someone else with her there, um, her significant other, I, I think that, that the crash would have been worse. And my shoulder still messed up. The other day I fell. <laughs> Yesterday morning, my, my ankle went out. But, but then again, the, the ankles, I've had that problem since I was a little kid. When I was born, I was born with, with feet that were messed up. I needed those braces that were, that I needed special braces. And my parents couldn't really like afford it. Only like a year, they got help for a year. I've had five feet surgeries. I have a feeling that it has to do with wow. the DNA program that I'm in and as a, as a child. Um, and most of us super soldiers have problems with the ankles because we have to fly, jump, fight, you know, time after time. <laughs> I, have, I have dislocated both of my ankles probably about 10 times each and broken, but well, I've broken each of my feet and all, almost all of my fingers. <laughs> they've all grown back somehow, <laughs> but, but, but my ankles have always been a little bit stiff, um, for a, a long period of time. And, uh, there's definitely other injuries. I could talk about injuries as well. Like 
you wake up. <laughs> it's like you go in the realm and you get your ass beat or you beat someone else's ass. And then, um, and I just want to be clear, we're not always fighting, but fighting definitely is, uh, is like there is definitely earth is battleground. That's all I can say. I wish it wasn't, but it is. You know, I don't like to fight because it's tiring and it wastes energy. I mean, that doesn't mean that we're not good at it. We're extremely good at it, but it is tiring. Creators would rather just sit around and create worlds than fight. When you're incarnated in this matrix, you have to fight to some degree because the negative forces are going to fight you if you don't fight them. It's not like we're, we're sitting here and we're like, oh, let's go fight something. It's more like, we're sitting around minding our business right. and they're just attacking you left, right, left, right. It's just kind of like how they're trying to force you to get the, the jab, right? That's an attack. They're attacking us. So, so like that's, it's, it's crazy shit. And, um, you know, with the, with what you were saying about the following and everything, um, it's not, yeah, as I said, it's not always bad, but I did have one experience when I was in Philly, when I was in college, it was the same time I was recording that video of the chopper. I used to have a lot more aggressive attacks because I was in the city. Like I had, uh, there was a time I got jumped and robbed. Uh, that was when I was just, I literally had just spiritually awoken. Like I, I, spirit, I had my spiritual awakening. The next day I got, I, I got robbed and jumped in Philly. It's, it's like crazy <laughs> like that happened. And then uh, there was another time where I was just minding my own business and I was training and this black van just comes out of nowhere and he's just sitting there and the dude is, is videotaping me. He's recording me as I'm like working with energy. He's, he's recording me. I see him. I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? And he literally just takes off and just dips. And I'm like, nobody else saw that besides me. Right? No, I can relate. I've had <laughs> last year. Um, I was in the, I was doing legs at the gym and these, four guys walk in with plain clothes and drinks in their hand. I'm like, what the hell? And I, I was talking to <laughs> one of my friends gym? online. What? At the gym? They're walking, they're, yes. they're, they're drinks in their hands at the gym? Yes. Okay. From it's triple scare, whatever the hell, you know? And I caught, I talked to my, uh, <laughs> my, my friend and I'm like, dude, this just happened. Just, this just did. Right. And then, um, by the way, since I was a little kid, I talked to myself in here or I call my dragon through my, through my wrist. Anyway, it's cool. Yeah. Um, so I was on the phone though with him, and I'm like, "Holy f, this just happened!" He's like, "Get the fuck out!" And I'm like, "Okay." So I come home. I barely got there, like maybe half an hour. I'm like, "Man, I gotta go home now." This stuff. So I come home, and in the front of the gates, there's a white van waiting for me. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh god!" So um, yeah, I told my other friend James Ring about it, and he's he's always being watched too. And then. What's weird is that I, okay, so I've been involved in many projects. One of them is Project Umbrella. Guess what? There's a vehicle here, an old cop car that has a freaking umbrella thing on it, the symbol. Mm. It's like, they're right here, you know? It, how, how, is this coincidence? No, it's not. But anyway, one thing that you can do is, and what I do is now, is I'll go into the van or, or the vehicle that's waiting for me. I'll go astrally. Like, I'm here in my room or I'm here yep. in my, or, or I'm at the gym. And, and, and I see a vehicle, we'll say, parked at the gym or here, right? And I'll go in astrally in my mind and just fuck them up. It's like, all right, if there's three guys in there, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, do the karate chop or I have, a, you know, my weapon, you know, it, it's, it's just, you got you to gotta tell them, hey, what's up? You got to tell them to not mess with you pretty much. Um, this is what's going to happen if, if you know, you're going to disappear or I'm going to go into your family and, and make them disappear. I mean, that's how you have to play. And this is not really plain. This is real shit. You know, you gotta, you gotta tell them who's boss. You gotta say, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna disappear or something's gonna happen to you. Especially when we were in the Las Vegas um, thing, um, Penny Bradley and I had seen the same guy, the same CIA dude, you know, the same description. And we were not even in the same room when, when we saw him come into the big, it was called the uh, Westgate. And of course we know that those are gates and, and jump rooms in, in the hotels, okay? Because I could be in a whole in, in the Westgate and you can be in the Sahara. And depending on the rooms, mine was 2220. So I was mm -hmm. like, that was my room. 20, no, it was 2222. And uh, Penny was in, in well, I'm not going to say who, what room, because, you know, anyway, we'll say she's in room 1212 or whatever. And you can hook up within there and go astrally 
through the jump rooms, or you can go, like say, if I wanna contact you through the Sahara and I'm, I'm here at the Westgate, we can go and plan a mission together or um, they just use us like that. Another thing that I found that was very interesting, I was with my friend Iris. Iris uh, had taken me out to, to, to lunch because I had like, this whole thing was, oh my God, it was like four days, very intense. I had like two opportunities to go out and eat right quick. So I went with her and we were standing outside in Las Vegas, there was like a Dairy Queen and we were at the In-N-Out and I was like, holy F. I looked at the Trump Tower, there's a Trump Tower and then there's these two buildings that go like this. They're like convex, I guess, or not concave, but convex this way. Convex. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like holy f, that is that's a Stargate, and and I understood, and I I I realized that that's what happened with nine one tag one, you know, um, they blew up the fucking Stargate. So I keep thinking. What are they gonna do with the Trump Tower there? What are they gonna do with the Stargate in Las, in Las Vegas? Are they gonna do something? Like, I don't know if they are or not, um, but it's just, that's how we can go through different portals and the ETs as well and the military. So what do you think about that? <laughs> oh my God, I have, I have so many thoughts on this because this is, people need to understand that this is so real. It's so real. It's, I can't believe how real some of this stuff is. I can't, I can't go into my backyard basically at this point without being detected by, I mean, it's always going to be like that because we're on the grid. Let's be real. Um, you know, I, I went to another lake a couple of days ago. I like to go to these lakes. That's where I have my peace. And this dude comes up to me and he's like, are you Dunuge? And I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, I watch your YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm like, what? <laughs> What? Oh no way! That's crazy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Marcus. Do you know? Do you know this guy's name? And it was my CIA friend. You got one of those too, huh? <laughs> I got plenty of those friends. <laughs> so it's like a stalk. I don't want to say it's stalking, but it's like the grid lines up certain things on purpose to always have somebody accompany you to some degree. To always be monitoring you, to always be reporting in on you, to always be checking up on you, to always be like, you know, seeing like, okay, is he gonna is he gonna raise his power levels too high right now if he's by himself? Is he gonna like, really like, test and see what he can do? Yeah, it's like, is she or he gonna escape the prison planet in their in their real body? Are they gonna leave the planet now? Like, they're like are they gonna? They're yeah, are they just gonna? Are they just going to say, fuck it? You know what? I'm done. I'm out. I'm just going to just like open up the wormhole and dip. <laughs> I was, I was thinking about that last night. I, I was in so much <coughs> pain and pain is part of our life. We know that. I mean, I can deal with pain. That's no problem. But I was so just tired. I'm like, why don't I just open up my portal and go? But it's like, man, you still got to be here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we chose to be here. So I, I don't think I'm ready to leave yet because I have a mission and I don't want to leave. But there are definitely some times where I do feel that there is a constant. Um, it's like as your energy signature grows and as you get more juiced up and you unlock more codes, you really are monitored by your family, by your friends. And this is not. This is not like they are uh, tracking you in the sense that this is some kind of government thing, because it, it can be government. The government's working through it, but this is an interdimensional thing. This is actually the matrix construct that's trying to puppeteer you. So it's the AI, simple, simple as, as that. It's the AI. And I've even watched my own friends that I really dearly care about be manipulated by the, the matrix construct. And I'm, I have to point it out to them, especially if they're conscious. I'm like, dude, you just got hijacked for half a second. And I've even watched myself get hijacked and then come back. It's where the ego takes over for a second, you know? So. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Uh, I was going to touch on the love bites again. Um, I had <laughs> CIA love, but I called it this. I named it the CIA love bites. Why? Because a lot of people were like, well, have you heard of 
there's a thing called alien love, right? And I'm like, well, it's the same freaking thing. It's just there. Some of them are backed up by aliens, ETs. Some of them are, you know, connected to the military government. Some of them are just nosy freaking neighbors. I have two nosy neighbors here. This one guy, every time I go to the gym, hey, como te va? You know, what are you doing? How was the new one? I'm like, dude, I don't even know you. Like, oh, where are you going today? I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I have my backpack with me. I usually just say I'm going to the gym, but it's none of his business. You know, he can tell because I'm dressed up like to go to the gym. Then there's another lady that comes outside every time I walk by her house just to say, hey, what are you doing? How are you doing? And any, any, do you have a boyfriend? Do you, you know, what happened with that other one? It's like, oh, you know, if I sit there and explain to her the CIA love bite, forget about it. It's, it's they're going to be like, Phew, it's going to go above their head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I understand I, about being hijacked. And then how, when I came <laughs> back physically to, because I had gone, you know, um, away from here, like for two weeks, I was looking for a place with this guy and he's SS, he was SSP. And I'm like, I'm not going to name any names, but it's like, how could I fall into that? You know, so now it's like, I don't want to date. I don't date SSP people. I, you know, I, I don't, my rule at the gym is I don't date uh, guys from the gym or SSP anymore. Cause it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine here. I, I really don't need anybody. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm my own queen. Like I, I'm my own twin flame. I'm good. Danush. It's just that sometimes, you know, you think, well, maybe, and it's like, no, I've already been married 18 and a half years, divorced nine. It's like, I really I don't know. It's like, it, I think the matrix is also um, involved in um, in trying to, to to get take your energy away and and saying, oh, you're very lonely. You need somebody. Well, that's bullshit too. <laughs> what do you think? The uh, <laughs> the, pro the programming is is rough. It's it's tough. It's it's really powerful. It's everywhere you look. Um, it's almost to the point where it can drive you mad if you're not strong enough. It can if you see what we're seeing. And you know what, for you, it's, I, I, I hate to say this, but it's even worse because you're a, a girl, you're a female, right? You're a woman. So when you started saying like, I have guys following me, like I don't have that to that degree, you know, there's definitely guys following me, but they're not following me in that the same reason I would hope <laughs> um, where there's like a sexual component as well to it. Well, so, yeah, I think it has to do with the, with the, cause you know, I don't know if you were involved with that, but I was involved with the sex kitten program with the MK, um, with the sex beta. So we all were trained in, um, we have altars. Okay. This and, is on the astral realm, right? No, this is real. real shit. This is in the physical realm. Yeah. They take us physically since we were little kids. So I was taking a, a year and eight months. So I've, I've been in all the programs. You can look them up. There's so many programs Jesus. anyway. So, um, it's pretty sad because uh, how did you get your memories back to all of this through the activations i ended up shooting myself in 2010 oh right yes yeah okay. and then i figured okay well i can't leave i i had remember i told you about the the, what, the people i remember and i thought yeah all that so then in 2017 2016 i started reading up on um what is a super soldier? You know, I, I started meditating. I'm like, who am I? I'm doing the I am that I am that I am meditation. I know I am that I am. Um, who am I? I started asking myself, what the freak am I doing here? Like, I don't want to be here, you know? And I, and, and, uh, and so I finally understood that I was using these programs and I'm very close to Max Fears. Uh, I started watching him and James Caswell on basis on Miles Johnson, I started um, contacting Kenny Bradley, James Ring, Susan Long contacted me. She's uh, she remembered me from one of the projects in Montauk. Then you know I just started making these videos and and just memory logs. And then people just started talking to me. Hey, I need your help. Or hey, I remember you in the Hulk program. I'm like holy f, how did you know? I had just you know done a video with James Ring about my regression about seeing myself uh, being made in this in this Hulk form. And um, he said, I haven't looked at any of your videos. Um, your cop picture looks so familiar. That's how you looked in one of the programs. And he started telling me all kinds of stuff that I already saw before. And it, I got my family back. I got my, my SSP family back. You know, they're very supportive. I, I don't know what I would do. I love my, my kids are my, I always say my right hand, you know, my, kids. my family. I know some of them don't support me, some do. But as long as I got my kids and my SSP family, I'm good, you know. Um, as long as I got me, I always say, as long as I got me, I got me. 
I learned to, you know, unchain my heart like this, like I put on my on my little uh, YouTube channel, unmask your soul, find out who you are, go through every, I started looking through all the uh, memories, like, like the bad things that happened and the things here on earth and the things in battle. So I'm still, I'm still figuring out, I'm still piecing things together, but now I'm, I'm able to help people based on my memories. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. And that, that's a, that's a lot of info too, you know, to like, to remember. And I, I don't know if I was in any of those programs. I don't think I was, but it might be like, I feel that most of the stuff that I've done has been on the astral realm. That's just what I feel. I feel like my physical life has been pretty mundane and it's almost been kept that way on purpose. So it's like, Hey, there's nothing going on here, buddy. Just live your normal life. Right. And it's like this facade. Wanted. Right. It's this facade of normality. But then when you go into the astral realm, things get crazy. They get they get so crazy. And the astral realm now bleeds into the physical. Yes. So now it's just one. It's right. no, there's no more physical to me. It's it's just always happening. I had a dream a couple of nights ago where I was fighting this giant being, a, a giant. It was a Nephilim. It was a Nephilim being, and he was taunting me. And uh, I actually started seeing these beings walking around in earth. They actually, they're actually here. They actually are still walking around in other dimensions. And uh, as soon as you sense their presence and they sense your presence, it's, it's constant war. They, they, it's like, they want to, uh, these are the fallen angels. I guess you could say these are Nephilim. Um, they want to fight constantly and they want to fight those that are, gods or were gods at one point they know who we are they remember they can sniff us out they can sniff our our energy signatures and our dna and they see us and they actually want to attack and battle so it's it's absolutely insane um i don't know how much else to to put out there without sounding completely insane you know I, it doesn't I matter, Danush. I mean, some of us were, were like me, I was labeled SMI, so we were really ill. Because, um, you know, my ex put me in a psych ward after that stuff happened. And and I, yeah. I it's like, no, I'm not crazy. And, you know, the uh, one of the, we'll say, one of the DARPA agents that I, I was I was talking to, um, he warned me to shut up. He's like, why are you talking? Don't mention the the three letter word, don't do this, don't do that. And I finally got fed up in our conversation. And this is a real conversation that we've had this conversation twice. And um, it's, I got to keep talking it's for the children. Why are you talking? It's for the children. First of all, the children, okay. Mm -hmm. They took us as very young. And, and you got to remember Tanush is that most of the time they take us physically, but sometimes they will use your 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 consciousness. And they will put it in another body. Okay, so I don't know. You might want to keep writing everything down, and maybe one day you'll remember. Um, one thing that I learned from Penny Bradley was uh, when I first contacted her, I, I asked her, "How do I get more of my memories back?" And she said, "Well, just ask your subconsciousness every night." And that's what I've been doing because that's where the key is. That's where the key of our memories. You know, and uh, it and I said, well, how do you know if the, if the dream is a dreamer or it's not? You know, how do you know if it's a memory? And she says, oh, you'll know. She says it's very, very real when you're there. You know, and so um, one thing that I've gotten really good at is uh, seeing the faces, like we were talking the last time. It's like go go ahead and see the eyes. Go ahead and see what does it transform into? Does it transform into an ET? Does it go away? Right? You've had many experiences like that. So many. Um, yeah, you're right. Like ordinary people, you could just be walking down the street. You don't even know that the person that's walking by you, yes, they're a human in the sense that they have a human body, but their astral form is not human. They are something else. And there's a lot of those around, uh, almost to a, a f not frightening, but just an alarming deg uh, degree. So uh, let, let's see, where can we take this? Where can we take this, this concept and this conversation? Uh, I don't want to put fear into people's minds. I don't want them to be afraid. No, no, Danush, but you know what? We got to, we got to tell them, okay, we got to tell them what's going on. And then they have to find a way to um, protect themselves. So I do many, many layers of protection. 
mm -hmm. uh, on myself and on my kids. It's like, I got my six dragons. I know who I am. I have my two angels, Lucifer and Michael. You know, you got to find out who you are and find a way to protect yourself. So go ahead. I mean, this isn't, this my show. We talk about everything and anything. And I always say to my guests, you tell them your experience to the best of your knowledge and always be truthful because I would never want to have a, a, a YouTube channel or you know, I'm not fake, yo. Like, I'm an open book. And there's so many people out there that know. And half of the community is mad at me. And the other half is like, you know, keep going. But I don't care. It's, I'm not here for popularity. So I'm here to, like you, I'm here to help others. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so so let me let me, let me me continue the story with where I left off with, um, I was, I was, okay, so I was at the park. And this park is is a fairy kingdom. That's what it is. It's a fairy park. It's it's surrounded by the fairies. Like if this is the if you don't know what a fairy forest is, you walk there with me, you'll feel all the fairies because they love me and they they love communicating. So the fairies are on our team, and that's a good thing. Uh, I've made an alliance with them. They're very yes, friendly. They are. They are. <laughs> and so uh, I hear them all the time, and I'm walking, and they always tell me like, don't walk in our woods when it's nighttime. And uh, I don't know why, maybe it's, uh, I kind of know, I, I do know. It's because there's other things that lurk at night in these woods that are not, uh, you don't want to be around. You don't want to have to deal with, you don't have to be, you know, basically fight with. But I, I went and I sat down, I could feel a lot of chaos, a lot of like, I felt that war after I got up and I saw the, the astral bomb go off and the birds take off and the, the craft in the air. I went to go sit next to another spot and I, I summoned a rune. I used a Norse rune because I have a strong connection to the Norse, uh, you know, system, Futhark. So I used a specific rune called, uh, called Rido. And Rido is spiritual protection and purity. And it's also about divine order. And so I summoned it. I drew it on the ground and I activated it. And I also called out to Enki. I also called out to the All Father because I have a very strong connection with him. And instantly, within instantly, not only did I, I sense this map, this giant like dome of energy surround my whole area, the whole park area that I was at. I also just like got flung back. My, my, my neck and my body just got flung back. And like, I literally just got like, sh like a huge hit of energy. And then I open my eyes and I literally see Anki. I, I see his outline right in front of me. He's like, I'm here. What did you call me for? And the first, the first thing that happened was I heard his voice in the TV show, American Gods. So this is the funniest part. The creatures, the entities, they'll talk to you in modern culture references. They'll be like, I'm here. What's up? And he's like, I'm here. Why did you call me? And I just asked him, I was like, I need, just need some protection. I just need some, like some divine energy around me right now. I can't be around this freaking lower astral stuff. And he just, he kind of gave me some reassurance and, um, I felt the protection. And then I, I got up and I dismissed him. I said, thank you very much. That's all I needed. Um, and he disappeared and it was, it was good. And I was like, okay, I can go back to my car. I can, I can feel balanced again. And that was a, that was a pretty powerful experience. These, these things happen like every single day at this point, you know, all day long. So that was the rest of my story for, for today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Yeah. For real. Uh, for sure. Uh, what I do is um, I've gotten, I've gotten caught where caught meaning um, at night when I'm riding my bike and it's like so dark and I, I've been uh, followed by two guys with backpacks and they're not even wearing helmets or anything like that. And there is something was going on with one of my kids and I can't say what, but uh, it's already, it's, it's over and it's, I broke the hex and all that crap. But anyway, um, that night they both like went to, there's like a roundabout again on St. Mary's by Speedway, Speedway and St. Mary's, there's like two portals here in town. And they didn't look at me, but they both said in Spanish, one of them said in Spanish, no mas de vine avisar. I just came to warn you. I'm like, and then they take off the opposite direction because I took a break in the light. I made sure that it was light and there's these huge tall trees. There's beautiful trees where we're in this specific area. And I asked the trees for protection. Um, so anyway, what I do is I say all that is seen and unseen come and protect me and my children in this now moment. 
and it just then I see the the roots coming up of the trees every everything that is seen and unseen everything everything as above so below it's like I'm always protected and I'm always uh, helping protect others too you know in my community and and even here in my apartment complex I will put a bubble of protection around every every all the complexes my cars their vehicles my cats you know just the children that are playing outside it's very important that um that we do this is this life is not a we're not here just for us. We're here, obviously, to help others and um, protect others as well, and, and to show them how to protect themselves. Yeah, that's so, yeah. That really well said. And I, I could feel the energy of when you were sharing that. Um, and you know, what I want to say is like, the reason why we are even going through these situations in the first place is because of the way that the earth is now, because of the way the consciousness is, and because of what humans have allowed to roam around in this realm. So because 99% of the people are, are still asleep or so many people are asleep and there's so much negative energy roaming around. There's a lot of positive energy too, but there's a lot of negative energy and it makes the grids heavier. There's so many denser energies that are allowed to roam around so many denser ETs, you know, basically junk astral junk, whether that be thought forms, negative thought forms, uh, directed energy weapons, whether that be, astral whatever you know i just call it crap it's just crap <laughs> it's true because they they sent the the bad ets to, <clears throat> to earth they said the the then you know the people that have people or entities that have to have been reincarnated here because of all the bullshit they've done to this planet to people okay basically they also call it a prison planet is because they send prisoners over here Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, go ahead. And we're also we're also security guards. At least I am. I'm also yeah. a security guard. Meaning, yeah, like yeah. that's one of my jobs. That's you know you said that and it really like I've really known this. I'm like <laughs> people. We're the, people we're the cops. We're the cops yes. of the. We are the mother. cops. <laughs> we are actually <laughs> the cops of Mother Earth. That's what it is. We are. <laughs> We are the, the Marvel heroes, the super, you know, we're the ones that are maintaining the grid, keeping it all patched up, making sure nothing slips through to the other side and also making sure nothing slips in and then keeping, making sure that the gateways stay closed. Because one thing that I've noticed is that these gateways are just opening up everywhere. They're just flinging open and there's all kinds of portals opening up and that's a good thing because yes, more astral energy can flow through, but it's also a bad thing because if it's the wrong gateways, then you have all kinds of nonsense going up and someone has to clean that up. And that has, that tends to be us. Yeah. We also have to close some of the uh, portals. So um, exactly. what I do is, I don't know, people have asked me before and some people say, well, why are you going to give your, 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 all your information out for free, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm here to help this is what helps me so whenever i want to um open a portal so when i was well, right wait, before, well, can i stop you for a second i don't think you should give all your yeah let's not let's not anyway oh no no open here's the thing, portals, here's the thing. <laughs> close portals <Here's> the thing. <laughs> i think that i think that you should share how you open and close portals but you know I give away a lot of information for free, but I also have paid stuff as well because I understand like, okay, my information is extremely valuable. Yeah. And if I give it out for free, sure, I'm giving it out for free, but I'm not telling you exactly everything. You know, yeah. like if you watch my courses and my school stuff, it's way in depth. I show you exactly what I draw. So that's the same thing with you. You know, if right. someone wants to book a consultation with you, you're going to give them 10 times more energy and ability to teach them what's going on than just on YouTube where we're just having a conversation about our experiences and just flowing kind of with the condo, you know, but no, we do this as right. a service to other, this is a service to other. This is not about us. We don't get, I don't give a shit about YouTube popularity. This right. is not about that. I actually hate that because now I have dudes coming up to me when I'm trying to be in nature saying, Hey, are you this guy from YouTube? I'm like, how did you even find me? Right. Exactly. Being and and you live what? You live close to uh, DC, right? I live close to DC, so I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of stuff going on over here. It's and that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, and you're there to hold the grid over there, and I'm here to hold the grid here because they always say, well, how come, you know, uh, at, when I was at the Vegas conference, there was a question saying, well, how come you guys don't um, live together or live, 
really close by. And it's like, well, because our energy is really, really high when we're together. So for example, the next day we, I get there and my friends, my SSP friends get there. Um, the, uh, the uh, elevator goes out. There's yeah. so half of the wing is, <laughs> the elevators are gone. There's long ass lines over here on this other side. It's crazy. And it's like, how do you, you know, and then um, when I, the, the day before I left, there was two SS that were there. I, I, I left, I was about to leave. And then the, the, the um, they had been able to repair some of the elevators, but it was the other side now, there were two that were down. And so I told my friends online, I'm like, hey, as soon as the last SS leaves, you know, Super Soldier leaves from here, from the Westgate, they, everything will go back to normal as far as like, you know, electronically or electricity wise. Yeah. And then I go to the airport and there's, uh, an, I went American Airlines, right? There's one that's down. There's, there's, <laughs> so there's a plane that's down. So when I get there, we're delayed because there's two more planes that went down. I'm like, what? Like it's unrepairable until the next day. So is this coincidence? No, it's just our, I was high vibing, you know, with my family there. I, then when I finally met them here in, 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 in the uh, 3D, as we say, Danush, I was so happy. We all cried. We're like, oh my God, I finally met you. You know, we've been in this, this program together and I, since we were kids and now I finally get to hug you here, you know, in this body. It, it's amazing. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, it's, I mean, they're kind of foolish to think that the elevator is going to work with all of those people. I mean, you know how big a person's tourist field is when they're activated? It's huge. It's huge. It's, it's huge. It's, you know what I heard? I heard that we, like one of me and one of you, like activated, one of us is 10,000 suns in yeah. one. That's what I hear. What fully, you- fully turned on, fully. max power. You can see that shit from from space. You can see the soul from space. <laughs> that's what they, and that's how they actually track us. They don't need any of these tracking devices. They can see our light. It's so big. I know when I turn my light on, I know it's visible to everybody. Every because everybody's like they immediately would just turn towards my direction, like like their neck is broken <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> No, for reals. Yeah. So what I do is, oh gosh, because I always say not everybody deserves to see our light. So I do the black shield. No. (laughs) I do the black cloak because I don't want everybody to go see me, you know? (laughs) Yeah. The invisibility thing is something that I actually been doing a lot more, especially like today when I was just first walking in, I was like, let me just see if I can just do an invisible thing. It, It worked a little bit, uh, I still felt that the dude was, he, he, he wasn't aware, like the entity might've been aware, but he wasn't aware if that makes sense. But, but yeah, back to you, what you were saying is like, no, there's no way that the elevator is going to work. If one of us, we walk around, I walk around in all the lights, uh, the street lights, not the freaking like house lights, the house lights always go out, but the street lights will go out these giant street lights <laughs> oh yeah imagine if like even just you and i or somebody else and with us would try and do meditation forget about it like before i was fully we'll say activated or awakened um my friend and i she was my best friend from high school we we did a circle around us this is like before i knew i was ss and all this programming and before i knew what my mission was and all that so she's like let's just do a meditation and then she put a circle around us with candles forget about it the candles went out then the kitchen light went out. We couldn't do it. <laughs> Imagine that. Ritual accomplished. Yeah. Man. You got to yeah, light the like, whole damn house on fire. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, we already talked about the fire that I almost had. Yeah. Here. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, anyway, do you want to keep going or do you want to take a break? What can we do? I'm good. We can keep going. You know, if, okay. if anyone wants to call in, that would be pretty cool. Um. But yeah, I'm, I'm down to keep going and, and to just shoot the breeze because um, it's it's important stuff that people got to kind of tune into. And what I have been, you know, I, what I've been working on a lot is just been not just warding. I, I don't know how much I want to like say, like, you know, but I've been I've been setting up a lot of wards because I've been starting to understand what's really been going on. Um, each day has been more unlocking so i've been setting up a lot of wards a lot of just 
a lot of just magical things or metaphysical things that can help me uh, anchor in my position better. I did this thing today when I was sitting at the, at the lake spot where I was sensing everybody else's grid. Like, you know how you're running on the grid and you're, you're in a specific spot and you can sense how much energy they actually are running. And I didn't sense anything. Like I sensed just, a, uh, just enough light for a human to run. And then I sensed my spot and I sensed how much it was just like flowing like crazy, like just a, a giant waterfall. And I said, oh, this is, why, this is why the things are getting attracted because so much energy is being put out right now. And that's a, it's a thing we don't think about. If you're activated, you don't think about how much energy you're running because you can't feel your own energy too much if you're in it, right? Yeah. That's why so, one of the things I, it's like, I can't sleep is because yeah. I'm like fully like aware and awake and I want to go do this and I want to go do that. But it's like, I already worked out three hours. It's like, what else am I going to do? <laughs> it's, it's especially during, um, I asked the spirits this actually, it's especially during 12 to 3 a.m. And the reason is because I asked the spirits, I went outside, it was like two in the morning. I'm like, why do I have so much energy during this time? And they said, because, and then they said it in a way, it's like, come on, bro. It's, so, it's such an obvious answer. You know, they have a little bit of like, you can sense their underlying like attitude or emotional energy. They do like, and they and they cuss too. You know that. Some people are like, oh my God, angels cuss. And I'm like, fuck yeah, they cuss. <laughs> angels will kill you. Yes, they will. <laughs> they will kill you. Angels can be more dangerous than demons, but, but yeah. anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the reason is because your light body, they said it in such an obvious way. They're like, your light body is the most powerful during this time. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, why do I feel the most, uh, like most physical during 12 to 3 PM? They're like, because your physical body is the most powerful during 12 to 3 PM. And I'm not sure if that's for everybody, but they were saying that just specifically for me. And I think it's probably for everybody. It is um, for everybody. And it's the three. It's the yes. three hours. It's and the then three. Some people have told me that they wake up at three or three, 33, like anywhere between three and four. So yeah. not only from 12 to three, Tanush, but from three and four, forget about it. That's where yeah. we can do the most magic. That's where the grid is kind of like, see, okay. How I see it, oh, I'm getting goosebumps, is that the grid has to be recalculated for the next day. Like you, okay, you're with the Anunnaki, so am I. So what do we do? Okay, we, it's time to put down the, the sun. Yep. Time there. Put up the moon, put up the rainbows. I got two rainbows. Hey, like every time I see one rainbow, I go, okay, where's the second rainbow? Let's put it up, you know? <laughs> and, and it's all I've, fake, but people don't know it's fake. I've seen them, I've seen them moving stuff around and they look I, at me like, you're not supposed to see this. What, yeah. what are you doing here? And they, they yes. just, like, they give you that look, like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to watch us do this. Dude, have you seen, have you seen the grid up there? Like the traffic? Yeah. Yes. The traffic, all the spaceships up there, most of them are in line, like freaking red light. We got a green light here, you know, got traffic jam, got a suicide lane going on. Have you seen all that? I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen like actual like traffic lights, but what I've seen is just so much activity that it's just like, how are you not seeing this? People? There's so much activity. There's more activity going on up there and around us that's happening than, than in the physical, like by far. So like, like, I mean, do they take a break and, and eat in their, in their, in their vehicles up there? You know, okay, well, you know, like here it's okay. So everything is like um, upside down, right? And everything here has a bleed through of, of up here. And people say, oh my God, it's outer space. Oh my God, it's like a thousand light years away. No, dude, just look up and there's Saturn right there. There's, you know, Venus up there. It's just, it's here. It's a if whole you, dome open, construct. Yeah, like like make pretend like there's a zipper and you open it up. There you yep. go. That's where we are. Yeah. You don't have to go like the uh-huh. movies, right? They say some things are real. They, they have to disclose everything for the sci-fi movies. Most of that crap is real. You know, it's just, you got to use your intuition. You got to use your gifts to say, oh, I've been there before. Oh yeah, that, that kind of jives with what, I, what I've seen or what I feel. Yeah. So um, yesterday there was an, a storm, electrical storm. And because we're going through monsoons. And usually I go outside and let myself get, you know, wet under the rain. And, and yesterday I was just sitting there letting my legs get wet. And I'm like, F this. So I took my beanie hat because I have to wear that special beanie hat sometimes. And I go outside and I and I let myself just get inundated with the water. And I ask, and I'm talking to the energies. I'm talking to 
the electricity, you know, the fire that's going on here in the astro. And I'm asking, I'm using this energy to heal my body. I'm using this energy, you know, to make sure that I have, you know, my, my bills paid this month. I'm using this energy to take care of, you know, whoever's around me, family, kids, whatever. Um, so, you know, I said, I need some sleep. I had not slept in like a long time. And finally last night through the electrical storm, I was able to get a lot of sleep. I feel so much better because I was in a lot of pain. All my bones were hurting. It's like, man, I just, I want to go home now, but you know, I'm not a PUSSY either. You know, I'm not going to go home. It's not time yet, but it, no. um, yeah. you gotta, you all have to learn how to use these energies somehow, you know, and that's what you teach, right? Sanus? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I teach, how to balance the, all that stuff out. And, um, I've been there with the whole no sleep thing. Like either this is the way it works. This is, this is the, the life of a Gaia cop. This is our new terminology, the Gaia cop, you know, like we're, we're, you said it perfectly. We are the police for the earth, the interdimensional police. And it's, everybody hates us <laughs> except for the good ones. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. The negative ones, they actually actively see us as a threat. They actually want to shoot us. It's kind of like how they treat the police in this, this world in the, in the physical you know, they're like, oh, it's it's that dude. <laughs> yep. You know, it's it's always the police, which I have no comment on that, by the way. But um yeah, it, it's super crazy. Uh and either you're gonna sleep a crazy amount. This is the way it works for me. Either I'm gonna sleep like 12 hours or I'm gonna sleep at nothing at all. You know, and I'm just gonna be wired because either my astral body needs to rest and it's it's used up a, a crazy amount of energy like kilowatts. If you, I don't know if you could measure this thing with a device, it would be like off the charts. It would be, it would be powering like insane amounts of device. You could, you could use that energy and power like a whole city. Exactly. You know, that's uh, why so, if they say if the sun goes out, then we got, we got us, you know, we come yeah, we just turn it back on. Up. Yeah. It's just, it's just a one or a zero. You just turn on the, the number back. They showed me how to do it. You just like, you see those writing on the script, you think that the script is actually a real pen? No, he's using an astral light and an astral tablet, and he's writing the codes of the matrix. And it's like, you see him, and, he, and he's like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to look at us. You're not supposed yeah. to see us. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what? why are you here? They, they get so, uh, they get so jaded. surprised. <laughs> they're jaded, like, like, oh, it's like a deer in headlights kind of look. <laughs> yeah, like, like they say, um, I don't know, like I used to read the Bible a lot, like, I've read it twice and I know that 80% is not right. We know that, but I do use things like, um, you know, the angels, they didn't, they didn't want to um, serve human, but they are lesser than us. Oh, hell no, baby. We, we are gods too. We are all the same, you know? And it's like, they hate it. That's why I prefer my dragons. Okay. Yeah. Cause I don't do angels. I only do one. I meaning do meaning I have one as that protects me that's Archangel Michael but he has an attitude sometimes so um I prefer my my dragons you know because come on I mean a lot of people like paint these you know cherubs and these angels like the blonde the platinum hair well some of the times they're Pleiadian some of the times they come from the Orion some of the times they're you know Lyrians like dress want, wanting you to think that they're angels the bad Lyrians because remember there's good and bad um the bad Dracos, the good Dracos, we can go on and on. But the mantids, you know, um, it's, yeah. they, they kind of, they'll shape shift. But we also have the ability to shape shift. So. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. I'm trying to say is I just wish that people would not be so indoctrinated in the religion that, you know, or we are more than this, guys. We, and, and it's nothing to do with ego. It, um. We're, we're here, you know, we, and, and I don't like to say the chosen one either, because that's also a program. Okay. You just know who you are. You know, we come from the uh, Anunnaki bloodline. We come from the, I have the O negative royalty bloodline. Um, you know, my, my, my mom and my dad have, have it. It's, it's just finding out who you are. And a lot of, a lot of people ask me, well, how did you find out who you were? And and I tell them, it's like, okay, well, I was looking at some of my pictures and my grandfather on my dad's father, I, I was looking at my grandma's picture when, when he died, they took a picture of her with my niece. And in the background, there's my grandfather holding a, a picture and I see his arm. 
you know, and I'm and he's telling me telepathically through through your pictures, guys, you can tell. Yes. I talk to my grandparents, I talk to them, and they tell they teach me things just by me looking at old pictures you and by me them. asking them to dream of them, you know. Go ahead. You can you can evoke them. This is this is something that has happened to me. Um, like yeah, as you said, pictures speak messages. They will they will you stare at the picture long enough, it will tell you what is going on like it, the spirit will speak back to you so you can basically talk you can even if you had a falling out with someone you can even look at their picture and you know you know remedy that in the astral realm let me tell you real quick before i forget what i do is when i go and cleanse people's homes of demons or cia whatever the crap um because there are demons too yeah. okay. um so i go and and i cleanse their home and everything like that especially now especially if they've had a breakup with someone i make sure that energy is out but i tell them do not keep their picture on your freaking phone delete everything and if you have anything that they've given you that you don't really have sentimental value you know that you're not using we'll say give it away thank it say thank you for the time that you served me like right, right? Mm -hmm. and then you just Say, I let go of my energy and my imprint. Please go make ha somebody happy. You know, like when I give out, when, when I sell a dress or when I give out a dress or it could be anything, a pan, you know, a, a spoon, something that, stuff that you're giving away, always thank it and always release your power, your energy from it because it has your imprint on there. With my hair, when it, when, you know how you're brushing your hair and it might fall out because, you know, you're getting new hair. And I say, thank you. I let go of my DNA. Thank you for the time you served me. I let go of my DNA and my, and my power. And then I, I let it go. And I thank my new hair that's coming in. I mean, there's so many things you can do, right? <laughs> that's the only way we're infinite. Everything, once you get to a certain level, like we're talking about, you know, everything you do becomes magical. It becomes energetic. You understand the significance behind everything. Every, every conversation lines up. Like, this is what, what you could do is like, if you need a spiritual message, you just go out into downtown. You just start, you just listen and spirit will just say something. You know, say, turn around. You turn around. There's an arrow. It says, follow this arrow. You follow the arrow. There's a Creek. You know, you go to the Creek and there's a bird that chirps and the bird of the chirps. You look up, you see some being like, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, I've, um, I, I, oh my gosh, there's so many times that I'll drive when I, when I'm bored, you know, I'm, I already did what I had to do for the day or the week and I get bored. And I'm like, okay, I have extra gas this week. So let's go, you know, and I ask I asked the, the, the sky to show me. So they'll show me arrows here and there. And one time I ended up in Catalina mountains. So beautiful. Like there was this house and it had my grandma's name on it, Juanita. And it was wow. my dream home. It was like a dream home, meaning that I wanted to have the homeless men and women there. Like my, one of my dreams is to have homeless and, and, and the homeless be educated, given a room for a month or two months or three months, the max, and then they turn around, then they go get a, a, you know, they go start their business or they find out what their mission is. This thing had, was crazy. a two story, 11 rooms, a pool outside, a huge kitchen. I was like, oh my gosh, I found it, you know, and Manifest. I'm still, and I put it on my Instagram, like one of these days, right? Then another day I ended up at a water reservoir because I love water. You know, I'm Pisces, so I love water. And I ended up at a water reservoir between here and Mexico. And I didn't even know it existed. Like Nogales, um, the border, Arizona, Sonora. And then I'm walking, I'm hiking, you know, because I'm already ready to go hike or whatever. I got my water, I got my camera, my phone. And then this guy in uniform, in a green uniform, comes out and says, uh, you're not supposed to be here. This is, uh, you can come visit us on uh, these general hours. I'm like, oh God. So I end up in, in weird places. I love it. You know, I love to, to I'm an adventure. I, I can't just, some days, yes, I, I have to sit home, you know, get, stay home after I do my routine at the gym or whatever, because of the energies, I can feel them. But once I'm it like, yeah, so yeah, sometimes they're so heavy, right? Then there's like, you just have to stay home. There are, there are days there's a few things I want to say. Like the first thing is you can just follow the currents. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll follow the currents. I'll follow the light and it'll take me to the right place to be. And I'll, some, I'll have to do something. Usually it'll be an unlock or I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll learn something. I'll communicate with the being, or there will be a certain portal there. There'll be a certain spot that I'm supposed to train at. But um, 
there is there is science everywhere and it's it's so so powerful and also um i I totally lost my train of thought there was something else that i was going to talk about what was it that we were just saying that's crazy that it just slipped out of my mind. It's it never okay. happens. Just saying, let me have my channel back. Let me have my channel back. Let me have my. Let me have my back. channel back. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> let Danush have his channel back. It's okay. It'll come back to me in a second or two. Yeah, um, we were talking about like just running. Uh, you know, uh, staying home sometimes, right? Because oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay. Yes. So there are some days where I can just feel. I can. I, I see it in my mind's eye. I think most of them look like scorpions. They look like uh, astral bugs, astral insects, astral, like giant scorpions, huh? It might I be have... tapers. It yeah. might be tapers, like the, the taper. It's something in my mind's eye that I see, like the fangs, the the, the, the pinchers, yes. and they're they're sucking the energy. So there are some days, and I also got my in my mind's eye just now the gym. So like, if you go to certain spots, like it's, it's, it's sometimes on a Monday, because the moon has a connection with it and the moon is a harvesting mechanism uh, on certain levels. So they suck a crazy amount of energy some days to the point where it's unbearable to be in the physical. It's unbearable. It, you just feel like crap. You can even see it in the weather. You'll see the weather will just turn all dead. Like everything will just look dead. That the, the world will look gray. And those days, it's really hard. Sometimes I'll go out and I'll actually actively reprogram all the energy, at least in my space. And that way I'll make it bearable just for myself. Like I'll make a like nice little, you know, oasis for myself. But everywhere else, it, it's just absolutely terrible uh, in frequency. And, and that happens the most during the winter by far. Uh, remember Halloween. Hollow. Oh. Okay, so I always celebrate Halloween because ever since I was a little kid, I loved dressing up, but now I know, now I know. I use those energies, right? The fear of people, I use them for good. Yeah. For good, For it could be for the kids, it could be for, you know, whatever. If something's happening in the world that you don't like, that's when we transcend it, that's when we transmute it, that's when our, you know, we can use most, we can use the people's power that they're not using. I mean, I use people's power too. Like at the gym, if somebody's like exerting so much energy and they're like, they don't even see that they're giving away their energy. I use that for the individual to heal whatever it is that they need for their finances. And then I use it for me too. But people mm-hmm. don't, don't know that. And they're like, oh my God, you're a witch. No, I'm not a witch. I just know to feel the energies of, of people. And, and with this uh, Halloween, it's harvest time. Okay. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Harvest time. So, so there's, this is, a, this is the earth realm, meaning that they, they harvest the energies. Now, Halloween is interesting because it's Samhain. Now it's also a pa- pagan holiday. So it's almost like, I think because it's such a powerful day, it's the day of uh, the veils dropping that they purposefully also duped it onto something else, AKA the harvest. So I don't believe that this date is actually inherently evil. In fact, I think it's one of the most powerful days where the veils are so thin that you can cross over and receive lots of information. If you want to do magic, that's the time to do magic. You know, like hardcore magic. You want to set up a whole ritual for an entire area. You want to realign a whole grid spot or whatever. That's the time. But what's also happening is... There's also the negative forces coming in and they're feasting. They know that there's so much potent energy happening at that time. So that's when they want to eat the most. And you might want to say eat the most how, right? They eat the most energy of the the children in fear because some parents will put so much fear in Halloween. Oh, don't do this, especially a religious factor. Oh, you're not allowed to dress up. You're not allowed to dance. You're not allowed to celebrate Halloween. You're not allowed to you know, all this crap, they also feed off that too. And in Spanish, in Mexico, we celebrate the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. And I set up my bread, I set up my water, my wine, my tequila, orale. I put my dad's picture, everybody's picture that has gone away most of the time. And if I don't have a picture, I just, I talk to them, you know, I tell them, hey, what's going on? You know, welcome. Um, I mean, they're always with me anyway. But uh, it's just more, uh, it's just, (laughs) one of the most powerful days 
I, I, that to me is one of the most powerful days other than Christmas, okay? And I don't celebrate Christmas anymore. I don't put up the tree anymore. But I do use that energy as well. It's the love energy, quote unquote, the fake love. Now, because there is a pseudo love and then there's a real love. So yeah. in Halloween, the giving, yeah, well, you give to receive, really? Okay, that's greed. Okay, we got the, 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 the green man in the suit, the white Santa Claus, meaning Satan returns, Saturn mm -hmm. returns. But then you can reverse it for the good. Now, do you have something to say about that? <laughs> yeah, there's so much. There's so much to say. Uh, Saturnian energies are not all bad. They need to be balanced. Saturnian represents groundedness. It represents physicality. So if your physicality is out of balance, that means you've really sold your soul. But if your physicality is balanced, that means you'll be able to transcend the physical realm. But here's the thing. One thing we don't realize is when we're dressing up as these characters, What's happening is we're actually inviting those spirits into our being, and especially the scary ones, especially the fearful ones. You're dressing up as a ghoul or a demon or a vampire. Now you're embodying that energy. Now you're going around to everybody's house. You're saying trick or treat. So you're casting a spell on every single person you walk on, and you're also sharing that negative energy to every person's house. Yep. So they really done fucked you. They really got you fucked. <laughs> they they did. And I usually dress up like Santa Muerta. Um, what they like just death. I wear my long black wig, my black, you know, half of the faces or the and I feel her in me and I love it because I do good, you know, but at the same time I have to balance it. Because a lot of people, they don't even want to look at me. They've said, Oh my God, you scared me. I thought you were a statue. Like one day I went dressed up like that to my son's football. It was his last uh, year at the, uh, uh, it was a senior year. And I was just like looking at the scoreboard, really, really, you know, dressed up like Marte, yeah. And uh, I turned around very slowly to look at the scoreboard. And then this guy, I me asustaste, like you scared me, you know, I, did, I thought you were a statue. So you have yeah, to be yeah, very, yeah. very careful, you do. But but I do it for, for good and I do it for fun too. We gotta have fun, you guys, it's just, like we were talking about earlier, staying home sometimes sucks. Yeah, I go to the gym, but I just come right back because I don't want to be out there. I don't. I don't want to deal with the negative energies. I already, I already deal with them here in my in my astral when I when they take me physically to go battle. I'm already dealing with it when I'm half asleep. I mean, the other day, my friend Iris, she said, why don't you go ahead and put a pedometer thing, like a, a thing where it tracks your steps to see if you actually get up at night? Uh -huh. Guess what? I never use my phone like in, in my in my person. I don't like to put it on my person at night. I usually have it away from me with some sleep meditation music. And I said, fine. So I put it in my pocket, right? In one of my pockets. And all I did that night was toss and turn. I couldn't sleep. I don't remember falling asleep. And then finally I had to go to the bathroom and I saw those 15 steps. How did I take 15 steps? And she said, no, it's not gonna time you if you move around. It, it doesn't time your steps when you move around Monica so I'm like weird and I've always wanted to put a camera here to see if I levitate or how many times I get up without me knowing like the other day I kept telling myself I gotta turn on my fan I gotta turn on my fan because I can't sleep without my fan and I'm like fuck it I'm just gonna fall asleep well guess what my fan was on when I went to the restroom like two hours later <laughs> so it's I know I sleepwalk since I was a kid but I say even if I do put a camera up the AI or, or the powers of B can, can get turn it, it and turn it off. Exactly. At the right moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the one moment that you need to, to have it working, it'll just glitch because that's the way that certain things work. Right. But, um, oh man, it's, it's some stuff, guys. It's some heavy stuff. There's positives to it as well. Like one thing that I've, I've really started to, to, to do is I can just go undercover, meaning I'll just turn off my energy. I won't, I won't use any energy. I'll just make myself human. And if I make myself human, if I cloak myself, I'm not even cloaking myself. I'm just not using any energy at all, as little as possible. Uh, I can go out, I can have fun. I can go out with my friends. I can feel pretty awesome. I can, I'll still see everything, but it, it won't affect me because I'm not, my aura isn't on. It's like inside of my body. I put it inside my body. Nobody can touch it. So I'm not even attracting any attention either because it's not around me. It's only when I turn on cop mode where everyone's right. like, uh-oh, there's the police run. Right. 
<laughs> or attack for the crazy ones. They're like, attack, attack, attack. <laughs> like, you're going to attack a police officer, really? You know, <laughs> Matrix know. police officer. They do that. I'll, I'll, uh, sometimes I'll wear my hat, like to work out, uh, or just wear my hat when I'm out in public, just wear a regular baseball cap or whatever. And uh, that helps me to focus more on just being not around, just black, just black. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the invisible shield that they show in the Wonder Woman uh, 84 movie, you know, it's like, you just mm. don't, it's invisible. Yeah. Put on your sunglasses. That way nobody sees my, you know, my eyes. And eyes are so incognito and it helps, huh? Eyes are super important. I'm not, I'm not one to wear sunglasses too much, but, but I know that eyes are super important. If I conceal my eyes, I can, it's a lot easier. I can like, I can hide my signature more, but I don't like to hide. I like to be pretty, pretty damn flamboyant. <laughs> um. <laughs> Mr. Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> not not necessarily it's just the, it's just the way my energy is it's like you can't miss it it's the giant oh no, i know flame. i know you and know same with um, me it's really hard to hide yeah yeah it's hot it's hard to hide you can't that's that's the way we're designed we're meant to be extremely powerful we're not meant for we're not or we don't originate from this matrix so if you don't originate from this matrix and you got plugged in here you have a giant energy signature like absolutely giant you're putting off so many more volts and ohms than the average soul the average soul um doesn't put off much at all and even even someone that is you know outside this matrix that came in here and even if they're like all damaged they got all kinds of psychological problems they, they've been through all this trauma they're still putting off so much more energy they're, now they're definitely putting off nightly you know they got all these bruises and stuff but they're still putting off so much more energy than what you would see just an NPC to be putting off, which is just like nothing <laughs> or very little. It's just enough very to have brutal. a human body running. I'm glad you, you touched on the NPC non-player character, uh, what I call Mr. Smith, also backdrop people, because there is a difference. Um, I, I, I came across this one person, uh, I met him at the Vegas conference and this man was stuck on the loop. You can yeah, tell that yeah. you can always tell when they are cyborg or you can tell when they are programmed to be stuck on a loop. Wow. Um every like every other thought was the same freaking the same. Um, how do you say he kept talking about the same thing over and over again within an hour of a conversation? I think he mentioned it like seven times. Um he kept he kept saying things like. Oh, the white hats are winning. Oh, you know, the military is taking over. Oh, you know, we don't have to fight. And I kept looking at him like, I'm here to fight. I'm not here to lay back and give up my, give up my, um, my weapons, we'll say, meaning my spiritual weapons or, you know, I'm not here to give up a fight. Hell no, I came here to fight. I am a warrior. And he kept saying, oh no, I was told by the military to stand down. Well, guess what? I'm not. You know, and, and, and it's like, it's these programs to get you to, to, to think that you don't have to fight, that they, somebody else will take care of it. Oh, no, well, we're here to take care of it. It's like, I, I'm not going to back down from a good fight. If, if, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got we to gotta be really careful with, um, you know, getting lazy and complacent to the system. That's how it programs you you start not tuning in, you start not paying attention to your energy. It's, it's hard. I know for, for the average person that's listening to this, like these, these guys are, or, you know, they're able to do this, whatever all day long. But what if, what about me? I'm stuck in the matrix. I got a job. Well, here's the thing. Your job is, is keeping you deeper inside. That's what's keeping you railed in. That's you got the leash real tight around your neck and it's siphoning you. It's stealing from you and it's stealing your life force, your loosh, all of your happiness and joy. So you got to take that back. You got to realize you're the creator. If you have money fears, realize that that is an arconic implant. That's actually an implant inside your brain. That's an energetic implant that's inside of you. And it stems from an emotion. The only way that they can implant you is by you having a devoid of your aura. So there's an emotional 
you know, something is not right within the emotions. And then when there's an emotional uh, inaccuracy or, you know, disalignment, that's how they slip in the implants and then they keep it. And it's like locked. It's kind of like having, you have a broken leg or something. So now they've got a, a chain around your leg because you broke your leg and you never figured out how to fix it. So once you go in and you fix that, that part of your astral body, now that force can no longer mess with you. Now you have to make sure that that part of you is fixed. So it's, it's in a way it's teaching you a lesson. It's a, it's teaching you a lesson, but this is, this is a school, but it's also a straight up prison. Meaning there are, there are forces and there are powers that are locked away here that are locked away that never need to be released, never need to be released. I don't know. We are coming into a point of Ragnarok, in my opinion. I think we're coming into a point where there's going to be a reset again. And I was recently reading the book of Enoch. And you talked about the Bible earlier. There are five books within the, the book of Enoch. And there are five, uh, basically, things. This is, this is the story of the Watchers and the Fallen Angels. And so you need to read. Everybody needs to read this book because it talks about the truth of humanity. It talks about the Nephilim. It talks about the giants. It talks about the war with the gods. It talks about how, you know, the most high casted out uh, some of the, the, the fallen angels basically for teaching humanity witchcraft and magic and sorcery. And then you really start to think like, who is the good guy and who is the bad guy in this story? Maybe the guy who calls him the most high isn't actually the good guy. Maybe that's just the AI. Right. What if we're the fallen angels? I always say that. What if we're the fallen angels? Because I have Nephilim bloodline as well, the giants. Most of us are. Most of us are technically fallen angels, uh, especially if you're here on Earth and you have the Anunnakian blood type. If you have the Anunnakian energy, then you're technically a fallen angel because you're not up there. Right now, whether you chose to fall yourself or you were kicked out is another story. Some of us chose. <laughs> Some of us got kicked out because we were just too vulgar. Some of us, here's the, here's the crazy part. Some of us that are actually fallen angels have to make sure that our brothers and sisters don't leave this place because they are also fallen angels, but they've gone too dark. They've now worked with the powers that be that are super dark. And now they're trying to get out, but you also know who they are. And you're like, I know you on a soul level, you might actually be my brother, but you're still carrying malicious codes. We can't let you out. That's why I'm here too. I'm yeah. not gonna let them out. There are people they, they have to balance their shit up, man. Because there I'm are not, people I'm not that I know. Exactly. And we we do that. We are literally grid keepers. So there are people I know. There are people that I had to cut ties with because I knew who they were on an ancient level. Big big people, you know. That's the people that I talked about in the last interview when we cut it off air. <clears throat> I know who they were on the ancient level. I knew what they did on a soul level. I knew how they fuck with certain things and they messed up the machine in certain ways and they corrupted the powers. And now they feed off of that corrupted energy. That, that broken machine. If you listen to them, all they talk about is I want to get out of the matrix. I want to get out of the matrix. I want to get out of the matrix. You're sounding an awful like, like a prisoner, bro. Why are you <laughs> sounding like a prisoner? <laughs> And then, you know, the ones that actually know, they're like, well, I could leave at any time. I know how to leave. Yes. I know that I know that I'm supposed to be here, but I also know that I'm supposed to keep my, uh, my eye on you. I, I have a weird connection <laughs> to you. Like, I feel a connection to you, but I know it's because I'm supposed to actually be watching you. And, and that's why they call them the watchers. They exactly. <laughs> I got my eye through. on you. Remember, what is that chance with the cloudy meat? What is it? Rainy with the chance of, what is it? Cloudy with the chance of meat. Yeah, I love that movie. I, I need to watch it. that again. That was, that, there's got some codes in there. On you. <laughs> yep, the watchers, baby. <laughs> so, so people need a, um, there's another really cool one called the Adjustment Bureau. You know, that's another movie. Ooh, I don't know if you've heard that on. Uh, it's just a movie. It's, you can watch it. I watch most of my stuff. You, you can watch it on Netflix or maybe Amazon Prime or, you can just tor like find another website. I'll, I'll send you a link. All right. To a website, uh, you know, where you can, you don't have to pay for it. Um, but the adjustment bureau is of the watchers actually funny enough and how they basically are keeping tabs on every single person on humanity. And they're constantly realigning their grid structures and their paths to make sure that they do certain things. They follow certain paths. 
That's exactly how it works. Well, basically it's like travelers. Um, I'm traveler 1800. I come, supposedly I come from Andromeda, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe that's so, just an implant, but I know I'm a traveler and I'm here to change the timelines too. So are you, are you talking about that one show that's, that's called travelers or? Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but, okay. it, but I didn't even look at that until, I mean, I knew that I was a traveler in 2017 and when did this come out just recently? And I, I think I watched like maybe two things of it. How do you say two, um, like five episodes or whatever they call it. But I'm like, damn, like, and then I also watched um, just certain movies that you watch and it's like, you know, like you already know that, you know, you know, and you know that the director knows, or if he doesn't know, he channeled it. And the actually, you know, what you actually know is that the beings know, and they channeled it through the director and the writer to right. tell you specifically, or all the ones that are meant to know, basically, they have to release that info. It's like, it's like you get in here, if you're, if you're a cop, if you're on the good side, you know? They're like, we're going to tell you, we're going to send you the right movies and the right things to watch and the right things to read and the right people to talk to. They're going to unlock your memories. So it's, it's not going to, you're going to go completely blind, but we can't straight up tell you. We right. have to, we have to send the right things to you. And, and here's the thing with, I never watched that show, but somebody that I know told me that I was the, the teenage guy. I, I never watched it. So I can't confirm this is true. The, the thousand year old one. The thousand year old one that's the 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 one who's like per, uh, forever stuck in a teenage body but he's like a thousand year old yeah i like him he's funny i don't know who he is but I, i'm just saying that's uh that's what somebody told me so i don't i can't well, confirm I, I, think, it. I think you're right on that one because you you are very very old but you're like stuck in this body you're only oh i'm so old it's ridiculous it's <laughs> that is cool that you can see like the different characters right and then what my um SSP family and I talk about like Susan and Frank, we always talk about how, you know, they used our, they used our story to make the Marvel, to make the, yes. you know, the Guardians. Where'd they the get Guardians. it from? <laughs> it's like, oh, and then, and then my, my family will say, well, that just sounds like you're straight out of sci-fi movie and you're, what you know, I'm like, no, 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 this shit's real. But of course, they're programmed to not wake up, wake up maybe. You know, and you know what I do like, Tanuj, about what you said? Well, I don't know if it was you or somebody. I think it was you. Um, how you you said that we have to create different worlds so that when, when we do leave this uh, prison planet, we go there. Dude, I have so many planets already that I've made and so many places that I can go. I love it. Uh, and thank yeah. you for that. Because I, I was thinking about that uh, a long time ago. It's like, well... I've already been to hell and I've already been to heaven. And those are cell things to hold people down, you know, their energy fields. I'm not going to go there. I've already been there. But where am I going to go other than home, which is my, where all my dragons, the gold dragons are my grandfather's there. Um, I'm a white dragon, but I can turn into a gold dragon. I, I have my family where I can go see. But where else do I want to go? You know, and I created oceans. I've created so many things. And thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. It's, it's, it's all about realizing, like, if you don't create something, the AI will be like, well, here's your world now, you know, and, and source, don't worry, don't worry about it, guys, source will take care of you, source has got your back, source will create the world for you, all you got to do is accept source in your heart, Hell no. Sounds like, uh, I'm mocking, I'm mocking a few people at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> or Jesus, accept Jesus or source in your heart, and he will take care of your afterlife, oh, hell no, I'm not going to be tied up, or it's like, don't worry, there. just vote for Trump. Trump has got everything under control. <laughs> he's your savior. He's coming back. He's coming back, yo. He's coming back, guys. He's, he's coming back. I promise you this time he's coming back. Okay. He, he, was first coming, <laughs> he was first coming in January. He was going to win the election and he was right. coming back. And now he's coming back in March, but he never Not came November. back in March. And now it's coming back in July. Wait, we're wrong about that too. Trump is coming back. And then he dies secret theory guys that trump is actually baron and baron is actually going to become the new ruler and it's it's like it's like yo he's running the jesus program this that's the savior program yeah right yeah and then the jfk remember jfk jr was gonna oh my god uh john f kennedy's still alive and he's gonna be our next president it's like well you know what jfk is probably in another clone body right now because they probably did save his consciousness and put him in another body that's great so marilyn monroe you know, all them, they have all these new bodies. You know, Jimi yeah. Hendrix is, is the, my, my, um, you know, that guy, um, 
what did I talk about? The, the guy that wants to be my handler, which I rebuke. I'm like, no, I do not accept. Um, you can feel that shit. I had that yeah. same thing come to me, that same vibration. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. And when, when he was in one of my, and when he was in one of my astros, like we were in this um, place where it was like a ball going around. There was a ball, ballroom, all these beautiful things, you know, um, I was in like the, the, the living room area. It was like a pentagon, like a pentagram and it was windows outside. And then once he came to me, I started making it snow inside and outside because once you put snow on you, AI can't really read your mind. So interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. How did you figure that out? All the time. Like when I'm walking by people, I'm in the grocery store or I'm, or I'm driving and I know this vehicle's right here. He wants me to look at him and I won't. No, no, no. Or I just feel the energies. I'm like, nope, I'm putting snow all around me. Mm. You think that's the, the crystalline aspect of the water? Is that what it is? Or it could be, but I was thinking the other day of those things that I see flying, like when you have your your camera on your phone on on oh yeah glass. yeah the white things yeah, those yeah all little the white little those to me are fairies those yes. to me are fairies that love me Ooh, i love them the so fairies much. are the only good that might be the only good thing i think so <laughs> but then again i i have been in siberia i named it siberia i i did a uh, show with james rink who did a regression on siberia and there's some there's not uh, not all of them are good i mean but i think the 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 little fairies the uh, some of them, most of them. Those are might be okay. pixies. You might the be pixies. thinking of yeah, they're, they're pixies. They're. Yes. Because the fairies are bigger. No, here's the thing. Fairies are not bad. They just really, really hate humans. They've yeah, told me. Like frogs. They oh hate them. Yeah. Frogs <laughs> will tell you a lie and they'll make you think that, you know, just to help them. And you got to be careful uh, with frogs and with, um, with fairies. But pixies are the ones that I see. The white. Yes. The white. So I feel that those are the ones who, when I put the snow on, I just feel uh, their love. I just, I love people. I see. <laughs> I see. So maybe you're, you're, you're just like borrowing their energy and, uh, you know, they're tapping into them and they're like, that's interesting. I've never tried that before. They're really but, happy to do so too. They're like, you really need our help. Okay, Beto, here we go. Phew, a bunch of them like will come and it's just. Very cool. You know, I had this, I had this crazy experience. Like uh, it was maybe like a day or two ago. Um, I'm in my basement right now, which is where I usually do my, my videos and stuff. And usually at nighttime, uh, there, I have this water like heater thing in one of my rooms in one of the rooms, and it makes this weird trickling noise. And as I was going, it was like three in the morning it was super late. I hear the spirit talking through the water thing, like so clearly it's like talking in another language. It's like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to Like, and I'm like, holy shit, this is freaking me out. Like it, it sounded a little bit creepy. And it was talking like a full blown conversation. And I'm like, yo, I had to like do a double take. Did I just hear that? And it was exactly what it, it was speaking in another tongue. It sounded like English, but it might have been like Arm Armenian or Armenian, you know, like some ancient, ancient language that was just super powerful. I think it's uh, Armenian because um, mine is my spiritual one is this. Okay, ready? yeah so you spoke that perfectly thank you and I, that's that's I literally a language huh that's literally a language it, it's like a light language i mean that's yeah, what people we call all it. have a light language now how i received it was the holy spirit quote unquote at church now i know that the Holy Spirit is a I. Okay. So you gotta be careful. But yeah, the real Holy Spirit's us, within you. Right. And the outside one, you know, the external, that's just the polygraphic projector. So yeah, that's a really important like distinction people gotta be aware of. But um man, there's the water though yeah it spoke to you now it, this is weird i'm glad that you brought this up is because when i'm outside and there's no one out there like sometimes i'll just walk outside and just go through a little trail that i know of um i'll hear the the screeching of the machinery the cars the the trucks and it's a language to me i'm like that's the machine yeah the machine that's the whole machine and the whole machine speaks itself and you can actually I'll listen to the machine. I'm like, you are in distress, buddy. I hear you. 
you are distressed because if you were calm, I, I'll teach it. You have to teach it actually. That's what we do as guardians. We're teachers. We teach the humans. We teach ourselves. We teach others and we teach the machine. You got to be like, you got to basically tune it. So I'll use an ohm. I'll be like, oh, and once I tune the machine, it'll tune back. It'll resonate the same frequency. I'm like, there you go. And it calms down. So anytime the machine starts freaking out, you just got to calm it back down. So it's not, it's not malicious. It does have an anxiety order <laughs> disorder. I was going to say, <laughs> now when I get anxious, I'm like, oh shit, is that the AI getting anxious? Cause I can feel it getting anxious. And I'm like, is that the AI getting anxious? What's getting that? Why am I so anxious? I had a good day, you know? And so I just have to learn a, a ways to calm down because then if not, you know, then you get anxi anxiety to where you want to eat the whole house and you already ate, you're not hungry, or you want to go smoke a cigarette, which is fine once in a while. But, you know, um, I quit. I quit in April, April 13th, organic cigarettes. And then the other day I had to have one because I was so freaking anxious. Like, and I, and mind you, I, like I say, I work out a lot. It's not, and, and then you know what I don't like, Danush, is when people say, well, have you tried this remedy? Have you tried that? Have you tried melatonin? Have you tried... Um, you know, I do drink the lavender tea, which is, it helps the valerian root, but it's, you guys, it's us creatures, I guess we can say uh, entities that are here to help you all. We don't, I'm speaking about myself. I don't like it when people say, well, you got to try this and you got to try that. And you're just, you know, it's like, guys, I've, I've already tried all the fucking remedies I can think about. Okay, well, I have, I have one more thing. What? I know you can, <laughs> Weed? <laughs> I, know you have, I know you might not like to hear that, but have you tried? Have you tried Syrian root and acacia? Syrian root? Syrian root. No, what is that? Syrian root, that's, uh, it's, it's basically ayahuasca. You can, you can take a little microdose. shut up. You read my mind. No way. Yeah, yeah. I was hearing that I should try that a year ago. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go try some ayahuasca, but I'm going to need, because I'm a shaman myself, but I was like, well, I guess I'm going to need a shaman by me. I'm glad you told me. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, you can just order it online. It's completely legal. The ingredients are legal. Serum root is legal. Acacia powder is legal. All you do is you order it online. Serum root actually does make you less anxious. Like it actually does calm you down. It will put your astral body in, in a calm state, regardless of what it's 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 like it's it has psychedelic properties so it will make you calm down it will force your mind because i've had racing thoughts and then i pop in a little bit of sin and rue and that thing just shuts my mind up i can't even think if i try to it basically just wow. turns your mind off wow i think that would help because i'm always thinking a thousand milliseconds per second whatever my mind is always going and I'm always asking myself questions. I'll go astral travel while I'm still awake. You know, it's like I solve all these problems, these puzzles. And then I'm like, well, how come I, I haven't even written my book? You know, I have six books to write. I sit down to write them and it's like, oh, there I go again. I have all this other stuff that I'm. Is this normal? This is this. This must be normal for us uh, entities, you know, gods, I guess here, the watchers. I, my mind is always going solving yeah. problems for humanity <laughs> a lot of it has to do with also the frequencies that are around us when i find i'm in that mode i realize okay i'm around too many electronics too much stimulation our brains are like add these days too much facebook too much instagram too much social media i like to just turn it all off and then that's when i'll go and train and, and work on my energy because that takes immense concentration if i'm going to create a beam of energy with my hands I have to concentrate. I can't lose concentration as the beam will disappear. So by training my mind, I force my mind to become more laser sharp. And that's how you concentrate your power. And then you no longer feel like your mind runs as much. It, it still does. But when You can calm it back down. I can bring it back really qu uh, quickly. And that's all about the training. That's all about the, the actual training. Like, yeah, we're super soldiers. Yeah, we have immense powers. A lot of people are running around untrained. They haven't honed themselves. They got to make themselves perfect. So that way the enemy just looks at you like, I don't want to pick a fight with this dude. His aura is too big. You know, I might want to just try, but it might cost me. I might have to be reborn in the astrals <laughs> for, 
for a week, you know? You know when you, you smite the entity and it's just like embers and like just like dust? It, it does reform back eventually, but it's like, oh shit, I have to reform. It takes us a solid week of time or whatever to it come does. back because it, it just does. got completely wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you told me because when I do it, I, I make them go into fire and then these little ashes and then the ashes... I will make the wind take him away. Yeah. Like, sorry, bud. Don't mess with me. <laughs> and then they come, they come back, but it just takes them a long time to rebuild. Whereas, whereas us, like, I don't know how many times I've died in dreams or something. I'll just, I'll just wake up. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I can't die. I clearly can't die. So I'll just go back to sleep, <laughs> go back into the wards. Like you thought you got me. I'm back. <laughs> Let's go it's again. True. And then, and then we, we get more like, we really don't need like our swords and our weapons because we have it right here in our heart chakra. But I like to fuck with them. I'm like, I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna be wearing this thing here and I'm gonna be getting this hammer and I'm gonna, you know, I like to do shit like that. But in reality, you don't need it. You just show up and it's like, oh shit, she's back. <laughs> you can make weapons. I just make yeah. weapons out of thin air. Like, yeah. I, or, you know, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just do a slash. So I'll just do an energetic slash. But as I do the slash, I'm cutting through the very fabric of, of the code and everything. And the whole reality, that's my sword. It's just an yeah. infernal, like a straight flame. Yeah. So anything that's in the way, it's not that it's going to catch on fire. It's going to literally split. I'm going to split right. the reality in half. I do uh, that with the, with the neck thing. I just go. Then, yeah, you can just, you know. Yeah. And everything around them, once I get to the main guy, boom, I get rid of him. Everything around him falls apart. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Too? Yeah. Yeah. There's been uh there's this one dream i had a long time ago where i was i was fighting these these chinese witches these black magician witches <laughs> and they were they they basically pinned me down there was like three of them and they were all females they were like chinese assassins and they they pinned me down and i was pinned down now i wasn't fighting back because i was just like what, what the hell is going on i kind of like to play games i was like as they were pinning me down i was like do you know who i am and they're like shut up and they started uh, carving some like sigil on my arm. It was it was like up right here on my bicep. And as I did it, the entity like grew out of my arm. This wasn't a dream. It grew out of my arm and came out and it manifested. And they're like, we've summoned it. And then I was like, okay, enough. And then this giant monster came out of nowhere. And that's when I was fighting this monster in these, these triads, these Chinese triad magicians. These people are real. You can look up they are. the... The Chinese uh, ma black magicians, they're actually real. They actually are hired by the government. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I've had to deal with them, too, fight them, too. And they have a different uh, energy to them. They, they use black magic with the Chinese art. So it's, it's crazy stuff. You, you, there are so many little deviations that have existed. So many players in this game that actually know what's going on. Uh, and not all of them are good, you know? It's funny. It's funny because I've also been one. I've also been a, an Asian or Chinese fighter and it's pretty badass. Now yeah, there, yeah. there's, you know, you know, what's going on right now with anime. I'm going to go to anime now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, my daughter told me, Hey mom, can you please sit down and watch this anime with me? I, I forget the name of it. There's this guy with the red eye and I also have an altar with, I have my a red eye. Okay. So this guy was, being told you you can't you can't feed off humans you know you gotta drink this blood from this animal or whatever but then there's this other man that was gay and a pedophile an asian dude and he was trying to get into this young guy's pants and also later on he takes him to an illuminati place where it's all red the walls are red and um like he's make he's wanting him to eat human flesh and blood and I told my, my daughter, I said, I can't watch it anymore. I can't. And she's like, man, I wish you could watch these things with me. And, and she understands because of the shit that we have gone through, the SRA, all the crap that we have had to go through as kids. I just couldn't watch it anymore. A lot of those truths are coming out in anime, the dragons that they have to fight. The three girls, they're Asian. I don't remember which one this one is now. They have to fight these red dragons. Okay, so... Our children, our ener the energy is being siphoned from your children, guys. If, if you don't 
go and protect your kids and take that freaking, you know, put some parental restrictions or control, whatever, you know, our, your kids, you think, oh, here's your, here's your laptop, go, or your little thing, go, go play, you know, don't bother me. These, these kids, their energies are, are, are being used, the louche, you know, and, and it's just, I don't like it. I, I really, uh, anyway, they have to tell you the truth. So they'll use anime, they'll use uh, sci-fi, they will use any kind of movies to, 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 to bring it on. Earth is a, uh, is a loose factory, as we talked about already. Um, everything is designed that way. Even the way that they, people walk around in the park is loose. It's all set up in this way. Um, and unless you have control of your own grid, you are also loose. So I'm not loose because I have control over my own grid. Veronica is not loose because she has control over her own grid. The second you lose control is when you start giving away your loose, your power. So it's very tricky, but once you get good at it, it's, you know, I can sit basically by myself in whatever location, the energy is not going to change too much. It's going to be pretty positive. Uh, the grid's not going to change. It's just going to be me and my frequency. So I'm, I'm completely at peace by myself. You know, the, the second I go into the world and I see the, the grid, then that's when things are, there's challenges, there's tests to see if you can hold that light. So I'm really glad I don't have any kids <laughs> at least yet. You know, obviously I'm younger, I'm 22, but I don't think I could, I have kids um, in this world. And I've already, I already thought about this. I don't really I might have one just because I need to pass my DNA down. I know it's really powerful and it needs to, uh, you know, go, go down, but I don't really want to have too many because I understand like what this is and bringing in a kid into this world is like, am I willing to bring in a kid into a loose factor, into a machine that I know uh, into spiritual attacks? Now there's beautiful things about earth. Earth is amazing. Like so many experiences, but this is a, this is a pay to play game. You pay with soul energy especially if you're a real, real player. Yeah, exactly. Um, I like what you said, um, especially, you know, we are in control. Um, Absolutely. I, you know, I, I was poor when I was, when I was young, uh, I was a little kid, kid with, uh, okay. So we only had, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the poverty thing, how it is an implant. Um, yes. Many of you have heard my story. Uh, we only got black shoes in the winter and white shoes during May, the summer. Um, our, we had to take off our, our clothes, you know, put on regular clothes when we came home from school. They, my mother would have to cut our, uh, my shoes uh, by the toes to let my toes out. Um, we, we ate uh, meat maybe once a month, but dad, my dad had to eat first. Um, my father, I would, I would ask him for toys, you know, and, 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 and he would say, mama, no, no tengo ni un cinco. He would show me his hand and say, I don't even have a nickel. No tengo ni un cinco. And, uh, that, that would, uh, that bothered me. So I grew up thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'm supposed to be poor and poor. They, they showed us in my family that it's an honor to be poor. We're not dirty. We're just poor. We're going to have a clean home. It's just we're and I'm like, no, I, I don't want to believe that anymore. And I started working when I was uh, 13 off the books. And, you know, later on, I, I was a cop. I had my own for six years before I was a cop. I had my own uh, home interior business with Better Home and Garden. I was top notch. I mean, I worked for Primerica. I was number one in both Primerica. And I mean, I, I, I had it all right. Then I got a divorce and I lost everything again. Mm -hmm. I had to live with family for a year, year and a half. And finally, I have my little apartment here um, for three years. And I'm, this, is, this is my mini mansion. Um, it's your dragon's lair. <laughs> yeah, you've got it. <laughs> Nobody come in. Don't underestimate Woo! it, people. Don't even get me started on my dragons. <laughs> See, I fired her up right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I do a, a money mantra, right? Because it, yeah. you can all be controlled with the food. The GMOs that are in the food, they are also used. Also oh. the drugs, okay, like in the black tar, whatever they call it, um, cocaine, whatever, um, anything, they have aluminum inside the, the food with the GMO and the drug. So they have these lasers that they can use to infiltrate them inside your body. Mm -hmm. Even the moon energy, I don't do the full moon thing anymore. I do take out my, my water and, and create it. I create what I want in a full moon. I don't worship the moon. The moon is fake. 
Um, they have the energy weapons that they send from there. From, you know, anyway, I'm going on and on, but we, ha we have to learn how to control ourselves with food. Um, no, I don't need the latest Louis Vuitton. You know what I mean? I know where the, the kids are That's making crap. Me. It's bullshit. <laughs> The Rolex, do I really need a Rolex? Yo, I don't need no Rolex. I got my, you know, I got my, my Shungai to me, look at this. Shungai is the most precious thing to me. I wear my Shungai necklace. I wear, to me, the gems of this earth are precious. Okay, no, I don't got no diamond ring, but I got my turquoise and this was a gift. You know what I mean? Like things like that. So the money mantra real quick is that I've been using for a year and it's been working is I am so happy and grateful now that money and prosperity comes to me and my children in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. And you can say abracadabra, open sesame, shazam, whatever you want, or nothing. But this is, this is the one that, that I've been working on for a whole year. And I'm very, very grateful. A friend of mine, um, Titan, he goes by Titan, he showed me this. And he's like, He'll be, he calls me Bea. He's like, Bea, how do you know that it, the, the money thing is in the pro program? Why, why don't we work on this mantra or whatever? You know, because we know that prosperity is the highest. It includes money as well. But I made it a point. I mean, look at the secret. The people from the secret have to tell you, right? In the book, the secret and the movie. However, they're not going to tell you everything. You have to explore it for yourself and your family. Teach them. You know? the, the way I like to think about it is like... Um, I'm fortunate that I've never had that problem. You know, I, I've definitely grown up kind of abundant and I guess I got lucky in that sense, but there's other things that I had challenges with. But the way that I look at it is that if we live in an infinite universe with infinite energy, money is energy. Therefore, there is infinite money. And if you stop thinking that you have to manifest money from somebody else and you're taking money instead of just, I'm creating my own money. Like I'm just yes. generating because I have, I'm self-generating my energy. I'm self-generating wealth. All you got to do is think that. That will automatically, your natural state is to be completely abundant, to have more than enough. Just like you have more than enough energy. We have so much energy. We don't know what to do with it. That manifests in money. So my life has definitely shown that. I'm like, I have more than enough money. <laughs> so much money, I don't even know what to do with it. And I don't spend it on anything besides books because more metaphysical books because that's that's what really matters it's like okay i'll use all my money to buy books because that was a, more knowledge equals more activation equals more consciousness equals better uh, you know just information just better upgrades and more metaphysical tools like crystals and you know things that i can use and 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 basically video equipment for for youtube and then occasionally, you know, on, on food and other stuff like that, but not too much on material stuff. I don't buy the fanciest clothes. I dress really simply. I don't buy anything else. Uh, and all of my money is just in crypto. It's just like, it's just a storage. Cause I'm like, I don't need any of this. I have it, but it is not necessary. Oh, you know? Danush, we were supposed to talk about uh, Bitcoin and all that. Do you want to come on again another time? We talk about all that stuff. We can definitely talk about Bitcoin and crypto. I made a whole course on crypto um, in my school. So if people want to check that out, you know, I have a whole course explaining everything A yeah. to Z of, of crypto. So I can give like some basic info and stuff for sure. But, okay. um, you know, I don't know if your, your channel is interested. People are interested in crypto or if they're more interested in yes, the, they are. They the are. SSP have, stuff, you know, we have three minutes. So go ahead and talk all you want and then give out your information and then we'll have to end because my. Also, my producer, Katie, she's like three hours. Are you also three hours ahead? Uh, yeah, it's, it's like about 12. -ish. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be nice. That's crazy. And I know she has kids, so I have to let her go in three minutes. But yeah, yeah sounds good. Give up. Because uh, I, I was listening to your crypto stuff. At first, I was like, oh, F crypto, you know, right. Bitcoin, F that. And, and now I'm more interested because, you know, we have these things thinking, oh, it's ET technology. And that's another way of them uh, tracking us. What, what do you think about all that? Oh, you know, they're tracking, they're, they're tracking you regardless. Let's just put it that way. Um, crypto is a little bit. Uh, okay, let's just from an inflation standpoint, crypto is going up, the dollar is going down. So if your dollar is going down, that means your money earned is actually becoming less valuable. If you shift your money going down to something that's going more up, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
you're going to make more money. So you're making your money work for you, which is how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to work for money. You're supposed to have money, manifest money. And then that money just keeps growing because it's an energy and energy always naturally grows. So if you start thinking about it like that, it starts to grow. Now, since we have two minutes left, I'm going to plug my stuff. Schoolofmysticism.mn.co is where you can find me. YouTube.com slash The Matrix Unveiled is my YouTube channel. And um, I'm available for, you know, come check out our school, number one, before you do anything, before you, uh, you know, first check out the YouTube channel, obviously. Then check out the School of Mysticism. And that is my school where I have everything explained. So all the stuff that we talked about, we go into so much more depth. And I also do private consultations and one-on-ones. Um, and that is what I do. This is my life. This is my living. And uh, I'm really proud of it. And, you know, there's so much to do. And, you know, I'm super grateful to be on here. And it was an amazing show. So thank you for having me. That's all. You're welcome, Thanush. I'm, I'm very grateful that you're here and that uh, you all know where to find me. So we'll, we'll end it now. But I, uh, it's live right now. We're live on YouTube right now, Thanush. And then I've shared it on Facebook. And like Thanush says, he's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He has um, uh, the School of Mysticism. And I'm going to be there in October. So if anybody needs coaching calls, super soldier questions, go ahead and call me uh, or Tanush. But thank you, everyone. Thank you, Katie. We're leaving now. Awesome. Yay. Wait a minute. We you just got, got your 500, 500 subscribers. Woo! That's amazing. Congratulations. That's awesome, Katie. Congratulations. I'm so happy. All right. That's well, always a good feeling. Yes. All right. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you.